Okay, everybody. Apple Pay in Xamarin Forms. This is the article from 2021. This is the official Microsoft documentation. Let's take a look. In this article, we got the requirements. We got differences between Apple Pay and IAP in app purchases using a payment processor platform, provisioning for Apple Pay, working with Apple Pay, and we got the summary. This guide explores setting up Xamarin iOS environment for use with Apple Pay to pay for physical goods such as food, entertainment, memberships via your app. It includes information on the required identifiers, certificates, and entitlements. Why does it do that? It's because Apple forces you to use identifiers and certificates in order to verify the safety of your app. It's a system that they have that is a little bit outdated, um, but it works. And it's a little bit hard for us developers to work with it, but it works and it gets the job done. So let's continue. Apple Pay was introduced alongside iOS 8 enabling users to pay for physical goods such as food, entertainment, and memberships via their iOS devices. It is available on iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus and can also be paired with Apple Watch for in-store app purchases. When used on iPhone, it uses Touch ID as a way to confirm and authorize transactions to a user's credit or debit card. Requirements Apple Pay is only available within iOS 8 and above and therefore requires a minimum of Xcode 6. Basically, if you're building an app right now, you're going to use Apple Pay. That is by law. There's no other option because Apple won't even let you compile if you're using something older than that. And if you have an older app, then good luck. You're probably going to have to update it and use Swift, which is might be still a combination of Objective-C and Swift for some APIs. But hopefully that's not your case. But Swift is a little bit better. Not as good as C-Sharp. Trust me, C Sharp is just the best because Swift isn't, it's just not built in a way that's easy to understand. There's, it's, the word that I'm looking for is not, it's not easy. It's like structured. It's not structured in a way that is efficient for maintenance, efficient for big applications. C Sharp is built to make big applications. Swift is not that much built for big infrastructure. So it's gonna be a little bit hard. Okay, so requirements. So as we can see, the requirements is that basically you have to do it uh in the latest version of xcode also the following items are also required to integrate apple pay into your app payment processor platform merchant identifier at apple pay certificate apple pay entitlement very important guys if you're getting an apple pay certificate it is a little bit hard to get uh it takes time if you're doing this on a time tight time schedule this thing is going to take a few days because Apple is going to verify not just your bank account, it's also going to verify your taxes. And the more countries you plan on operating, the longer it's going to take. So if you're in a tight time loop, uh, bear that in mind. So you're going to need a payment processor platform. What's a payment pl processor platform? Basically, it's a app that is designed to connect with the banks and 
it's designed to connect with Swift, an API that's protected by the government. Uh, it's the API. It's one of the APIs where money is created, <laughs> sent and received, and that's basically a very powerful API. Very few people have access to it. It's very hard to get that permit. So there's a handful of companies that have that. You can search payment processors on on Google, and you're gonna find a bunch of them. Um, Google has a list on Google Pay that has pretty good ones that are user friendly, easy to implement. Um, merchant identifier is we're gonna figure that one out. An Apple Pay certificate, okay. Um, The Apple Pay entitlement is just a ways of Apple of asking people for a bunch of certificates and stuff like that, which is useful for them uh, to continue to keep the platform safe. Um, and because they're very heavy on security, they're very heavy on legal things and finance things. Uh, okay, so differences between Apple Pay and in-app purchases. The primary difference between Apple Pay and in-app purchases is the products that's, that they sell. Physical goods are sold via Apple Pay. Food, accommodations, and physical entertainment such as cinema tickets are all examples of this. In contrast, in-app purchases sells virtual goods such as premium or extra content and subscriptions. Think additional months of streaming service or extra lives in a game. The framework used are also a key difference. Passkey is used for Apple Pay, while StoreKit provides the framework for API for in-app purchases. So in summary guys, if you're making, if you're selling physical goods, you go with Apple Pay. If you're selling virtual goods, you go with in-app purchases. And here's the link for the different types of options you have. For physical, you use passkey. And for digital, you use store key, store kit. With Apple Pay, Apple states that it does not charge users, merchants, or developers to use Apple Pay for payments. In comparison, in-app purchases has a 30% charge for each transaction, ouch. Moreover, with Apple Pay, the transactions does not go through Apple at all. Instead, it goes through a payment platform. So that's a very powerful difference, right? Using a payment processor platform. One of the fundamental parts of Apple Pay is the processing of payments. While it is possible to do this yourself, it requires significant knowledge of cryptography, as detailed in Apple's Payment Processing Guide. Payment processing platforms, on the other hand, handle these options for you, allowing you to concentrate on building your app. Two options include Stripe, sign up at Stripe to access their APIs, Judo Pay, check out their Xamarin sample code on GitHub and register at Judo Pay. Provisioning for Apple Pay. Okay guys, so Judo Pay is a really nice option. Um, Stripe is another nice option also. Uh, they're both quite good. Uh, bear in mind, this is a SaaS product. So you will be, uh, <laughs> you will be paying a fee. So you gotta probably pass that on to your customers. Provisioning for Apple Pay. Configuring an app to use Apple Pay requires setup on the Apple Developer Portal and within your app. There are a number of steps that should be followed to successfully provision your app for Apple Pay. Create a merchant ID. Let's see. A merchant ID is used to let Apple Pay know that you can accept payments and is passed to Passkit's payment request method and used in Apple Pay entitlement. Browse to the Apple Developer Center and go to the Certificates, Identifiers, and Profile section. Okay. 
Under Identifiers, select Merchant IDs and then select the plus to create a new merchant ID. Fill out the form, illustrated below with a new description and identifier. The description makes the ID identifiable to you and can be changed later. The identifier must be unique to you and it must start with the string merchant. Apple recommends that the identifier be in the following format merchant.com your app name so Apple is allowing us to create our own merchant ID which is pretty cool it's not bad um, this is important because this is the thing that is going to appear when the transaction um, received is built on the API side Confirm the details and register your ID. Confirm your merchant ID. Ensure your merchant ID information is correct. Piece of delivery, merchant.com, piece of delivery, blah, blah, blah. Create an app ID with the Apple Pay capability that includes the merchant ID. In the developer center, click on app IDs and under identifiers, app IDs. Select the plus button to add a new app ID. Okay guys, in order to follow this, there has been some changes since this document was made in 2021, since we're in 2022. You don't, you no longer have to go here. You actually have to go into certificates, identifiers, and profiles. It's like a big uh, blue tile in the middle of the Apple Development Center. And you will go to certificates, identifiers, and profiles, and you will go to the list it's, it's going to be a list like this that says identifiers and you're going to click on that and then you're going to create a new identifier and you will be shown a list that has identifiers and on that list you will be shown the merchant id checkbox and you're going to check that merchant id checkbox and that's it. Sorry, I can't show it because the account is private. Um, but if you follow those instructions, you will be good. It's basically the same process. You will get the same thing here, description, and you will get the identifier. Register your merchant. It says on the new screen, it says you cannot use special characters. We recommend using a reverse domain name style string. It's the same as here. Um, it's exactly the same. Okay. Okay, guys. So after that, we register our merchant ID and we're good to go to the next step. Create an app ID with the Apple Pay capability that includes the merchant ID. And now we go back to the identifiers. We're, all we're gonna do, all we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing it in the certificates, identifiers, and profiles page. And we're gonna now go into identifiers and we're gonna create an app ID. Okay, guys, so here we have to go into selecting our ID for the one that we just created. So we create our ID. Remember, this is all under certificates, identifiers, and profiles. It's a button on Apple, so you will not miss it. Okay, after you guys do this, then we go here and we set it up. We select it after we create it. And we have to select the merchant ID we want to assign. After that, this app ID can now be used to generate or to regenerate a new provisioning profile as described in the Working with Capabilities Guide. Now we need to create a certificate for our merchant ID. A certificate is required by Apple to encrypt sensitive data associated with the transaction. Each merchant ID created must have its own certificate. To create a certificate, follow the steps below. So basically, again, guys, we just go into the 
certificates, identifiers, and profiles, and we select create a new certificate. The old way, that one that is being presented right here on my screen, but that I can't share the one that's the latest one because it's still going to change, but uh, it has confidential data, which I can't share. Um, basically, it's a little bit different. So basically, now what we have to do is we go into the certificates tab and we create a new certificate. So in this instructions, it says create a certificate for what is a merchant ID, but that is old stuff. Right now, that is not available. What you can do right now is you create a new certificate and you call it and you select the distribution, Apple distribution certificate. In order to do the next step, you're going to need to actually be on a Mac. Uh, obviously, uh, you know how it is. Um, so you will follow the, the steps that are required to do this. 90% of the time, there's a YouTube video that teaches you this, so I'm not going to go over that. And it's very simple. And uh, let's continue. Okay, team. So basically, the confirm your merchant ID uh, menu has changed on Apple. It's no longer the same. It's a shame that this kind of stuff happens. Um, they should probably keep the same format. Um, so people don't have a bad experience when they're developing their apps. Um, but basically this documentation is right now outdated. This is not up to date. Apple changed their Apple developer account. So if you follow this, you will go to a dead end, sadly. I hope this tutorial is useful. And on the next tutorial, I will be installing the Apple Pay code um and we will be examining different tutorials but sadly i followed this tutorial it leads to a dead end there's nothing available on the apple website that can allow you to follow this tutorial in any way possible as of right now 2022 and uh, this was written in 2021. So I don't understand why is it necessary to constantly upload, update uh, this website. It could just stay the same and that way people wouldn't have any problems. And uh, well, I'm gonna have to dislike. Nope, not helpful outdated apple changed their website thanks anyway <laughs> <laughs>